Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my September 2019 horoscope report for you. I'm going to give you the top three must knows for your sign, including details like looking at the actual charts and seeing what fields of experience these aspects in the sky are going to drill down for your specific sign and what that looks like and how you can best use the energies. I offer so many free resources. Most of the things that I do are free. So you definitely wanna tap into all of the things that I am offering to you besides these monthly videos that I offer always a month early. You can also go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com to get written horoscopes by me and all kinds of other astrology and other blogs. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to see all of my astrology blogs plus inspirational blogs and other things there. You can sign up for my free email newsletter where you get a written write-up of the month to come a month early plus my 28 day virtual coaching program for free at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So definitely make sure you're tapping into all of the things I am working hard every month to offer you. Now I'm going to go into the details of what your sign has to look forward to in September, 2019. Hello Taurus friends, welcome to my September 2019 horoscope report for you. We have a wild month of around 28 different aspects that are definitely going to make you stand up and take notice. So between this video, which is focused on the top three things for Tauruses to know this month, and other resources I've created that I will direct you to, I will give you complete coverage of this month, what to expect, who the players are involved energetically, and what areas of your life are going to be accentuated with these aspects. A lot of the things we're going to talk about have to do with aspects in the sky connecting with earth and water energies, and these feed into a favorable angle with your placements. So even in the places where we have some bumps and some challenging angles, most of what goes on this month is going to be in a favorable angle to your placements. So I'm going to give you lots of details. I'm going to drop the charts in, show you the difference between the early, middle, and late degree charts as they pertain. And I'm going to um, give you as much input about the top three things so that you can stay focused and you know what you need to know to make this month the best possible. Okay, so many of the things I talk about will be true for all early, middle, and late degree placements but there are going to be places where I differentiate out into early, middle, and late. So early Taurus, you are our April born or zero to nine degrees, middle May 1st through 10th or 10 to 19, and late May 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. And if you're watching for a moon in Taurus or Taurus rising, this report is for you equally as for the sun Taurus folks because the sun, the moon, the rising are all windows into the total astrological picture for the individual each month. So the theme of this month is the top three must knows for Taurus. And so I'm going to give you a quick overview and then we're going to go into lots of detail because you know that is what I like to do. The first thing that we need to know is Uranus continuing to move through Taurus. The second thing has to do with this stellium of Virgo planets, how they will try and make a beautiful aspect to these other earth signs here in Capricorn, which also creates a grand trine with your Taurus placements and with, with this Uranus. And then the third thing is about Jupiter and what it's doing for the rest of the time before it moves into a different sign at the end of the year here in a few short months. Okay, so the first thing for the must knows for Taurus is that Uranus is moving through your sign. This is going to be current for many, many, many years, but what will change is <clears throat> who in the Taurus spectrum is being most affected by this. Okay, so you early degree placements, this is really the domain of your experience right now. Now, of course, to, you know, Uranus is somewhere for everybody. So Uranus could be bringing its upheavals, surprises, breaking up an old matrix in favor of a new, better one, you know, um, breaking up stability. That is going to be happening for everybody in the Zodiac because Uranus is somewhere for everyone. But if you have an early degree Taurus placement, so anywhere between zero and even 10 degrees, so really all the early, this Uranus movement, where it has been and where it's going to continue to be for the year, is accentuating things for you. But 
the same thing that's also jostling you when we have this um, grand trine energy. And in some ways, I mean, this is really loose because this is six degrees and these are higher degree, but it's still the energy of um, Capricorn being accentuated in the stars, Taurus being accentuated in the stars, and now um, Virgo coming in and bringing in, you know, major manifestations. So it definitely can be jostling to stability. And really this message is true for all of you, like I said, um, and it can uproot things. But if you've been stuck, it can definitely get you unstuck. So Uranus is continuing to pursue its efforts to get you unstuck. The second must know is about these energies. Now I'm using this early degree chart, but I'm talking about all of you. And when I differentiate out, I'll let you know, but just assume that this is for all Taurus placements. So when the planets get into Virgo, it's like, well, whenever there's a stellium, so when there's a grouping of planets in the sky, it's like a party or a gathering or a convention. And the members of the convention have different personalities, which is denoted by the energies of all the different, um, you know, Mercury, Sun, Moon, Mars, Venus, all those personalities are coming together and there, there are certain things that they rule and they're having a Virgo gathering. So if they're having a Virgo gathering, this is going to be more um, focused, you know, like a, a tactical uh, strategy meeting, getting a plan together, getting organized, getting on the same page, um, getting a structure created. And that's the energy of the month for everyone. Then those planets are going to come and make this beautiful, most beautiful angle in astrology, a trine aspect to these other earth planets here. And this blends so beautifully with your Taurus placement. So middle to later degree placements, you're going to have an extra boost from these things being in middle to later degree signs, but all Taurus placements are going to get beautiful kisses from this 120 degree angle to your placement. And then just, it's, it's a material manifestation party in the cosmos for sure. So things you've been working on can manifest in a big way. If you're not quite ready to launch your big things, this can be a time where your foundation is built very strong. Now, later I will add in what, how, where the party's at, the fields of experience that are being lit up. But first, I just want to talk about some other things that are going on with these Virgo placements. All right, so we've got that aspect of things. Then we have all of these Virgo placements making an opposition with Neptune. So oppositions tend to have us feeling like we're being pulled in two different directions. So expect that energy throughout the month. It can be exhausting. It can be, you know, feeling like you're stretched to your limits. It can also feel like things are antagonistic or working against you. But if you get going in a really good groove, it could be the kind of thing where you have all the balls up in the air and you're like, wow, this is really cool because you reach your superhero um, status where you are doing these magical things and just keeping everything going. So if you can, you know, the energy pulls and pushes and repels and, you know, drags, but it also can force you to, to get going with a really good groove that helps you to transcend all of it. But the topics of uncertainty, doubt, insecurity, including breaches to security can come up because of this Neptunian force we had a lot of expansion in August and a lot of sweet aspects. And this can also just be a counterbalance, like asking you, did you overcommit? Is your foundation strong enough for future expansion? Um, now you, you know, have to do the work that you agreed to or, or something like that, you know, so that can be the energy that comes in. And then the self doubt around that, like, can I really do this? Is this possible? Is likely with that Neptune transit. The third piece is that all these Virgo placements, which had been in Leo and made that beautiful aspect with Jupiter in August, which is where it's just sweetness and happy surprises all around is a big potential. 
now they're squaring Jupiter. Jupiter's ruling expansion. It's now direct. It wants to push forward. And these Virgo placements are saying, hey, not yet, mister <laughs> or miss. You know, you have to look at the details. So expansion wants to happen. Jupiter's trying to bring that about. It's been romping around, um, you know, bucking and all of that in retrograde, wanting to move forward. And then now it's trying to move forward. And the Virgo placements are saying, wait a minute stop and look at the details. So that's a square and that's a challenging angle because Jupiter seeks to expand. Virgo seeks to contract only in the way to look at the details. So you'll feel that, but if you get your ducks in a row, this can make your project grow even bigger because you're doing the necessary work that will bring you future success. And this month is very important over the scheme of 2019 and 2020, because 2020 is a year of personal planet retrogrades. If you followed my work, you know that retrogrades is one of my areas of big focus. So in the retrograde times where the personal planets are retrograde, the tides are going in. So the energy is going inward and backward. And that's amazing for so many things. But for your big launches, for your big decisions, for your big pushes forward that you need, you know, the tide going out to launch your ship of dreams, September 2019 is going to be one of the last full months that there's no personal planet retrograde influence. That and then January 2020. So basically between now and October 12th, you're free of personal planet retrogrades, then so now until October 12th, and I do go into more details about this timeline and other dates to note in 2020 that are free from the retrogrades um, in other resources, including a video called September 2019 must knows for all signs, but I'll give you just a brief overview. And then we've got retrograde energies until December 9th and then December 9th through February 2nd is the last big open window free of personal planet retrogrades. Um, in all of 2020, you're going to have a couple of days, um, like at the end of March, beginning of April, and then at the end of July that are free from the retrogrades and the, and the shadows. But otherwise, September's one of your big months. So if you can't launch this month, don't rush it, don't push it, don't be stressed. Use this month to get all your ducks in a row so that you can use that December 9th through February 2nd launch point. Now let's look at the houses, the fields of experience that are being accentuated. So when there's a party, okay, we talked about, you know, the players involved, the mood they're in, the place they're having the gathering is the house, the field of experience. So let's look at these houses that are aspected from these uh, things we've discussed. So I'm going to now break this down by early, middle, and late. I'm just going to quickly list the houses and then I'm going to make a grid and we'll talk about what you can expect as far as mischief and magic in those places. So early degree placements, you have the fifth house, the eighth house, the ninth and 10th houses, and the 11th house. Middle degree placements, you also have the fifth house, the eighth house, could be a little bit of the seventh too, the ninth and the 11th, and late, you have the 4th and 5th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 11th. Okay, so for the late degree placements, home, family, real estate, housing, child psychology, um, working from home, home-based projects, expansion projects, building projects, are more likely for the magic and mischief. I'm calling it magic and mischief because there are so many different transits that are um, happening and some of them are sweet and some of them are salty. All right. So then the early, middle and late, you can have magic and mischief in the fifth house. So things involving children, creativity, creative projects, acting, being out in front of people, leading, fashion, singing, dancing, and athleticism, anything that puts you in the eye of a bunch of people, hobbies, fun, and romance. 
This is a house of true love, too. True love. So there can be magic and mischief in any of these sectors. The partnership sectors are aspected for all Taurus placements. Early and middle, you've got seventh house potentials, and early, middle, and late, you have eighth house, and those are the partnership houses. So finding your perfect practitioners, um, anything with your romantic relationship, finding a new one, expanding an old one, business relationships, client relationships, even relationships with your neighbor or anybody, and your relationship to relationship can also be accentuated. Also, because of this eighth house, this is loans, debt, credit, taxes, topics like that. If you need to get a loan, if you need to get money, if you want to pay off debt, or if you want to borrow money to expand your business, this is great energy for that. Inheritances also, sweepstakes, winnings, lotto also. This is also a, a house of spiritual wealth you know, resources that are, are less tangible, stocks and stuff are, like that are in here. All of those um, crypto things are in there. There's less tangible money-related, currency-related things, but also spiritual breakthroughs and mysteries. So something involving a mystery or just a good mystery novel, um, solving mysteries or deep research. If you're a researcher, this is very well aspected or your desire to go into deep research. Astrology is in here. Astrology is the 8th and the 11th, so if you're into astrology, <laughs> as you must be if you're still watching, because I go in a lot of details, <laughs> um, things could be accentuated there for you. And really, education could come up if you're wanting to learn about any esoteric pro pro um, topic. This uh, ninth house for all early, middle, and late. Teaching, learning, so learning programs, um, teaching things you already know, publishing projects, international travel, things working with the church or spiritual work. And if any of you have work in any of those areas, your work could be beautifully lit up from that. And you early degree placements, regardless of your work um, area or, or, or um, type, your 10th house of work is being accentuated as well. And for all early, middle, and late degree placements, the 11th house is being accentuated, which has to do with friends, friendships, networking, social media, groups, teams, organizations, large organizations, humanitarian efforts. So making contacts, this is a type of month if somebody is like, oh, I want to introduce you to my friend. Or I know somebody that can help you with your project or trying to set you up on a date or something like that. This has a lot of promise this month, as do internet-based projects, launches for websites and other things like that, technology-based projects, patents, copyrights, things like that. Um, I mean, really, copyrights fall into the ninth house, but that's accentuated for you too, but the patents would be in the 11th house. And again, astrology is, is coming up big, so going deeper into that. The third thing on the list was talking about Jupiter and where it's at and what it's doing. So Jupiter was going direct in the beginning of the year. Then as of April, it went retrograde. Then in August, it went direct. So things that had been stalled out could have come back to life recently and will be pushing forward. So early degree placements, you've had this in the eighth house and you will be completing the tour of the eighth house of Jupiter here soon. Once we get into December, might go a little bit into December for um, you later early people, like if you're at the end of the early spectrum. Middle degree placements, you are having the eighth house accentuated, but some of you middle degree placements, you still actually have Jupiter back here in the seventh house, as do the late degree placements. Late degree, you can see it's dropped back here. Sometimes I get the question, some astrologers are talking about Jupiter being in this certain place for all Taurus placements. Why are you saying something different? There are different systems of astrology. 
There's a whole house system that many astrologers use, which don't take into consideration the early, middle, and late degree placements. My philosophy with astrology and with most things in life is really inclusive, meaning I look for how everybody is right and how there's room in an infinite reality for everything to have a layer of truth in it. So my work does not negate whole house readings. It does take into consideration certain additional aspects that are true, that if you're not also looking at the Placidus perspective, that you would be missing. So whole house will show certain pieces and Placidus will show other pieces. And even though they seem to conflict, the way I look at it is I just add them together. They're true at the same time. So from the Placidus perspective, this, um, you know, some middle and late degree placements, you don't have, you haven't had Jupiter accentuating your eighth house yet, but that will start. And you might've felt it like at the beginning of the year. And then when it went retrograde, it just backed away from that energy and it'll take a little bit to get back there. But I'm going to go back and talk about what Jupiter in the seventh looks like. And then we'll talk about what Jupiter in the eighth looks like. So even though for some of you middle and you late degree placements, Jupiter in the eighth isn't happening yet, you know what you've got coming. And then we'll talk about what you currently have as well. Jupiter in the eighth is one of the best aspects for expanding your spiritual, psychological um, uh, experiences. This is an esoteric house. It's um, for people who are wanting to go deep and wanting to go deep into learning. You might find that your interests get very diverse in the esoteric realms or even just straight psychology, parapsychology, things like that. This is a house of shared resources. So familial money, expansion of familial money, moving forward with family projects, inheritances or money from, you know, resources from family, working with family on things. Also spouse, spousal money and working together. Collaborations in general, deep intimate collaborations of any kind. This is the house of intimacy and sex also is in there. So if you're trying to go deeper into those realms, this Jupiter can expand that in a really big way. This can also have to do with um, loans and taxes and debt. And so you could get in more debt when Jupiter's there, but it could be very productive debt. But Jupiter can also bring freedom. It can bring freedom wherever it goes. So you can get freedom from debt. You can pay stuff off and get stuff streamlined. And Jupiter in the eighth house is one of the best aspects or transits for winning money or having money come to you randomly or having money come to you that you expect. So if you get that nudge about being in a sweepstakes or playing a lotto, it's a time where you're, it's, it makes more sense to do that. Not that you want to, I don't want you to engage in it in an addictive way or an excessive way. Um, but you know, if you have that feeling, the odds of winning things are higher. I remember I went through a, a time, I didn't know about astrology at this time, but I was just like winning things like crazy. I had a corporate job. This is like 5 million years ago, but, um, and I was just winning things like crazy so much. So like my luck, it enhances luck with things like that. It was so notable that one of my friends was like, listen, Annie, there's this thing I want to win. There was like this little sweepstakes thing within the company. Um, and I know you're not interested in that particular thing. Why don't you put your name in and win it for me and give it, to, win, win it and give it to me. <laughs> That's what he said. And so I said, sure, I'll do that. I'll win it for you. So I, I put my name in and I did win it and I did give it to him. And, um, later on, when I was studying astrology, I was like, huh, that sounds pretty Jupiter in the eighth. I wonder if Jupiter was in the eighth then. And it was. So it's just that kind of thing. For the rest of the middle and late degree placements that don't yet have Jupiter expanding that eighth house, it's expanding your seventh house. And the seventh house has to do with your personal partnerships. So finding freedom. One of the taglines for Jupiter is freedom. And so it's like, finding freedom in those places and freedom for people can look different, you know, a different person freedom. You could get freedom from a relationship. Like there could be a breakup. You could get freedom, meaning that you stay in the relationship, but there are positive shifts. So you become free from the shackles of an old dynamic. Lots of karma is wrapping up in these recent months. I don't know if you've been feeling that, but I know I have. And a lot of people that I've been watching have, so you could be getting freed from, karma. Some people will decide to engage in more of an open relationship or 
um, expand their options. If you're single, Jupiter in the seventh house can bring in a multitude of options for you relationship wise. Um, and sometimes people who are in committed relationships will have a, a, a third party come in and create some mischief in their relationship or seek to, you know, be part of a process of freeing them from something that wasn't working for them. And I'm not uh, having an opinion on how this goes. I'm just letting you know that I see this happen very commonly where the energy of expansion in the relationship can come in many forms. But this is also amazing, amazing for building a clientele, a client-based business, expanding your client business, um, expanding your personal contact list in a big way. Like if you are having an email list, like building your list or something like that. And it's also great for getting your team together, finding perfect practitioners. If you need a therapist, if you need um, an, an assistant or an accountant, Jupiter in the seventh house can help you build your team and get you know that kind of in infrastructure in place. It can also just be very busy where you're just meeting a lot of new people and being exposed to a lot of um, people that you may have a good mental rapport with. So overall, the month is full of sweet aspects with um, the Taurus placement specifically, and even the ones that have some conflict, they're still making nice angles to your placements. So as we get towards the end of the month and the planets move into Libra, the energy shifts a bit because Libra energies don't flow as well as the Earth energies did. But there's still a lot of sweetness, especially on September 28th when we have the new moon in Libra with even more new partnership possibilities for everybody and a nice aspect with Jupiter and Venus then. So there could bring some nice money, love, self-esteem boosts, especially at that time. It's a month that you're going to need to work hard, but Taurus energies are no stranger to that. And But it is a month where you can really get the gold. We have 28 different aspects this month, and it's so astrologically busy. I've focused on the top three for your sign, but if you would like to have more information about all of these aspects, definitely look for my September 2019 must-knows for all signs. All right, so if you search for Annie Botticelli and then just the general must-knows for all signs, you're going to get more details and then also, if you sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com, you get a write-up of the month ahead, a month early. And in there, I list all the 28 for my September one. I, I list all the 28 aspects, the days they occur, the planets that are involved, what you can expect from them, and you have that delivered to your inbox. And I do that every month. So to get the full story about everything, and I have other resources, which I'll list as well to help give you all the information you need to make this the best month possible. So if you love details like these, I have so many more places that you can get resources for this month and in general astrology. So definitely listen to my video, September 2019, must knows for all signs. That's going to give you lots more details about how these aspects can show up and how you can best use them. I have written horoscopes that are usually talking about things different than the videos for each month. So you can see those at CozyBySweetStarlight.com. There are also astrology and other blogs there at CozyBySweetStarlight.com. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to see my massive amount of astrology blogs to help you with transits that are occur occurring now. and other goodies on my site. You can sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com, which will get you a write-up um, about the general aspects with all of them listed so that you have them for your planning purposes always a month early. So you can do that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Plus you get my free 20-day coaching program called Shine when you sign up for my free email newsletter. So I also have astrology education. So all the things I just listed are all free and I do those for you every month. But I also have some even more in-depth astrology education options at AnnieHelpsYou.com that you can check out. I would love for you to learn with me. <clears throat> 
definitely check out my book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days, a Amazon bestseller and um, a wonderful companion for my fellow spiritual seekers. So you can see that on Amazon or at RadicalPrayerBook.com. And you can check out my husband's site for even more resources that he offers, which is I am helios.com so he's br newman at i a m h e l i o s.com i hope you have a wonderful month and i'll see you next month bye